Yeah, I did that. I can make any woman feel better about herself. Lost over $100,000 in a toxic relationship combining finances with men. It's normal to cry every single day for a year in my previous marriage. is the exact same reason that other women put up with unfair relationship dynamics and emotionally unavailable partners. It's because we're told we're crazy. Melanie, what shouldn't you say to someone going through a divorce? Mm. Dating's rough out there, you sure? I want to share how I am learning for the first time in my life what it feels like to be liked by my romantic partner. Huh? Yo, what is going on, guys? I hope you are all doing well. So on today's episode, it is everybody's favorite time of the week. We are going to be taking a look at modern women who are dating after divorce. Now, you might say to yourself, Taylor, you know, you, you cover this subject a lot. You covered it recently. Um, how is it that you don't run out of video clips to cover? And the answer to that question, guys, is there is always, and I do mean always, new ones so without further ado let's just jump right in as always guys don't forget to leave your thoughts and your comments and we're going to be listening to this woman first up here who is a 40 plus year old divorced woman uh, with what is seeming to be a shoulder tattoo i think here uh giving dating advice to other single women so let's take a listen ladies it is time to take the rose colored glasses off why so we can see the f red flags i had such a low self-worth and insecurities I chose not to see the red flags and I can make any woman feel better about ourselves because I was with like a Richard, you know, that guy, that guy that gives you attitude when you want to sleep over with your bestie. And because you're so insecure, you leave your bestie's house and go to him because you know he's going to cheat on you. Okay, so let's look at this. You know that the guy exhibits red flags, or at least in your own word, you're saying that the man has red flags, okay? Whether or not he actually does in truth is a different question altogether, because a lot of these women, they say that a dude has red flags, but really it's just that the guy has boundaries and self-respect. Um, but she says that the man has so uh, has a bunch of red flags. Let's let's take her at her, at her word here, right? If the guy has red flags and they are obvious to you, why are you with the man in the first place? Why did you get married to the man? Why did you have a long-term relationship with the guy? This is the part where no accountability whatsoever enters into the discussion. Okay, because it's all very well and good to date the bad boys or to date XYZ type of guy. And then all of a sudden, five years into a marriage, you're like, well, you know, he's got some red flags. And then you decide to leave and take his crap. Really, uh, really convenient stuff right there. Or go get attention from other women because you're not available. So instead of just saying, bye, no, I went, I went, I started negating myself, my life, what makes me happy so that I wouldn't be cheated on. Wait, so you mean, you mean to tell me that you have to give up? Like, here's the thing, okay? We're, we're missing a lot of information here. So she just said that the dude got upset. You know, the, the dude basically said, uh, had an issue with her going to her bestie's house is what it sounded like now we don't know if this bestie is a 304 who does night work on the side we don't know if this bestie of hers is a dude friend we all know how that goes right we don't know any of this information all we get is man is insecure he demonstrates red flags and i had to put myself second in my relationship and it was so damn hard this is something that's really obvious to me guys but doesn't seem to be obvious to a lot of these uh modern women is that relationships require sacrifice i'm sorry but if you're a girl running around out here and you've got 35 boyfriends and you want a relationship from a man oh hell no oh hell no go go and have your relationships with your 35 guy friends you know screw that red flag number one red flag number two when you can't finance your own fucking truck and you need my paid for vehicle to put down on it yeah i did that i can make any woman feel better about herself Lost over $100,000 in a toxic relationship combining finances with men. Like, no, this mama is rebuilding her life, focused on herself. My self-worth has taken three years to get me where I needed to be. 
and I'm just here to share the good stuff. Endless red flags I chose not to see. Rose-colored glasses off. I see everything now. I yeah, see, this is what happens, okay? If you're, uh, if you're attractive to the woman, she will notice your red flags, okay? She will know all of the things, you know, oh, well, he's probably going to cheat on me. His past relationships, you know, he cheated on every girl before me, but I'm going to be different. I'm going to change him. See, they know how silly it is. Like a lot of these women, they try and play like the victim card of, well, you know, I, I dated this guy and he was so awful and this and that. But the truth is, and this is what the woman is literally saying right here, is you knew that the guy had a bunch of red flags, but you chose to engage in it anyway. And this is where my empathy just immediately gets cut off, or excuse me, it didn't even begin in the first place, but this is why I don't have any empathy for the situation, is because I don't like to give empathy to people who don't deserve it. And if you sit here and you make these decisions, hey, that's totally cool, you can do whatever you want, but I'm not going to treat you like a victim because you're not. This is not some freak accident. This is something that you deliberately chose to do. And now, guys, really conveniently, okay, now that we're 40, we have the demands. Now that we're 40, we've, we've built our self-esteem. We've done our healing. And now that we're 40, we're ready for a guy without any red flags. Very interesting. Very, very convenient. I am here to support women. I have a free masterclass next Wednesday, two different time slots. I can make you feel good about your dipshit choices. Like we get in these positions, like what the f how'd we get here? And when we can support each other as women, we get through it and we get to the other side. I am. Okay, so not only is this a 40 plus year old divorced woman, I, I, is, this a, is this a shoulder tattoo by the way? I don't really know what this is. Um, this is a 40 plus year old divorced woman who is functioning as a dating coach, okay? Now, I, I've said this before on the episodes, but if you're a single woman and you're taking dating advice, from particularly older single women who are, hell, divorced, uh, single mothers, whatever the case may be, that advice is probably going to keep you single. It's probably not going to be good for you. It's, it's kind of like going to someone who ha has never been able to have, like, who is incredibly broke, homeless, ruined their life and everything, and you go to them and you're asking them for financial advice. That's the equivalent. But a lot of these people, they're like, well, I've been through some terrible things and chances are the dude wasn't even that terrible, by the way. She just got bored. Um, and now I I'm ready to give, give advice about self-respect to other women. It's like, no, 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 no. That's absolutely not. But of course, guys, dating coach, master classes. And the women who listen to this advice, <laughs> like, the funny part about it is they're going to be the victims. <laughs> it's an evil world we live in. Have you guys noticed that some of my videos have gone missing over here on YouTube? That is because I am slowly moving them over to locals where I can actually host them without the risk of getting in trouble. If you are not aware, many creators are starting to move over to places like locals, rumble, etc. Because YouTube is not really a free speech platform. So if you are interested in supporting the channel and getting access to videos that are no longer available here, make sure that you come and join us over on Locals. The link will be in the video description down below. Supporters get access to their own exclusive videos that are no longer available to the public. So make sure you go to the link in the description and join us over there now. But anyway, guys, back to today's episode. But anyway, let's get going. And when we can support each other as women, we get through it and we get to the other side. I am proof. I could not be where I'm at if I didn't have the women that support me and surround me through this crazy journey called motherhood and dating and divorce. Whew, what a ride. Yeah, what a ride. So it seems as though she's also a single mother. So on top of being divorced, uh, 40 plus years of age, no serious relationship, it seems anyway. Uh, we are we are now a dating coach, and we are a a single mother, or at least we have, or at the very least, even if we do have a relationship, we have a relationship with a man who, assumedly, is not the biological father to the kid. Just uh, absolute mess, man. But hey, guys, dating coaches on TikTok, what can you say? Uh, let's jump into this next video here. I haven't seen any of these, so I'm in for a roller coaster just as much as you guys. Let's uh, 
Let's take a listen to this woman. I thought it was normal to cry every single day for a year in my previous marriage is the exact same reason that other women put up with unfair relationship dynamics and emotionally unavailable partners. It's because we're told we're crazy. Basically, I was always the problem. You guys find it funny how, like, whenever a woman says, you know, like, he called me crazy or whatever, they, they this is the face we get. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I mean... I'm inclined to uh, take the man's side if he said you were you were crazy. Um, but I saw a really nice comment before I continue with this video. I saw a really nice comment the other day. I think it was on yesterday's video where one of you guys said in the comments that emotionally unavailable men or uh, an emotionally unavailable man basically just means a man who is not easy to manipulate. And I can't really help but agree with that definition, to be honest. Like... W women, as much as they say that they really dislike emotionally unavailable men, again, all you have to do is look at their dating history and it's nothing but, quote-unquote, emotionally unavailable men, i.e. men who are not easy to bend, i.e. dudes who are not easy to manipulate and to change. Because when women change dudes, they straight up get bored. Like, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. When a, when a woman can go out here and change everything about a dude just because she says so, um, they get bored, they perceive the guy as weak, and, and then they move on. But let's keep going with the video here with the uh, <clears throat> not crazy woman, guys. Exact same reason that other women put up with unfair relationship dynamics and emotionally unavailable partners. It's because we're told we're crazy. Basically, I was always the problem. It was always my fault. I was always in the wrong. I was never right. I was always stirring the pot, apparently. It always felt, you know, as I was being told that it was self-inflicted pain. So it was my own fault that I was crying every single day. And I've struggled with depression in my teenage years, so I know what that feels like. And once I got to the realiz realization that I'm depressed again and it's because of my marriage, I communicated that with my ex and told him that I had scary thoughts in my head and thoughts of And um, his response to me was, well, that seems stupid. And why can't you just be happy? So that was one of those moments where I was kind of like, right, this isn't okay. That's not an, that's not a loving way for a partner to respond. And it started making me actually think, you know, does this man actually love me? And is this the kind of love I want to have for the rest of my life? I'm asking. So before we get into the next video, obviously there's a lot of details that are missing from here. But why is it that we're like, knee deep in a marriage okay we go years or however long into a marriage and now we realize that oh just just conveniently guys out of the blue that this is not the type of love that she wants in her relationship like how how stupid does that sound like let's think about this for a second a woman has a relationship with a man for x amount of time you know they get to know each other whatever they're in a relationship probably for a couple of years assumedly or whatever yeah, a few years mind you they, they then go on, decide to get married. Then the marriage goes on for X amount of time. And then she wants to leave. And her reasoning is, he didn't give me the type of love that I wanted. This is something that you would assume that any level-headed individual would figure out far earlier on. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, don't, I don't have empathy for these situations because what these women do is they go really deep into a marriage, really deep into a relationship, and then all, all of a sudden he doesn't love me, and before you know it, the 80% statistic, 90% for college-educated women, uh, they just decide to up and leave and conveniently take the dude's crap or, or the kids or whatever, um, when this is something that could have been solved a very long time ago. If the guy wasn't loving you right, in your own words, that's not my words, but if he wasn't loving you right, why did you stay with him and why did you choose him? But we don't have those discussions because that requires self-accountability. Let's continue to the next video here. I'm asking my team what you shouldn't say to someone going through a divorce. Here we go. Sherry, what shouldn't you say to someone starting a divorce? It's about time I didn't like them anyway. Ooh, good one. Sarah, what shouldn't you say to someone getting divorced? Um, ooh, so your ex is going to be single now? Bye, city boy! While you're enjoying this video, make sure you subscribe to me and our fellow Fiend Gang members. You can find their channels linked in the video description. If you like my videos, make sure you go check out Warg the Detective, Hidan the Mummy, and Lock the Bounty Hunter, and subscribe to their channels in the description down below. Now back to the video. Erica, what shouldn't you say to someone getting divorced? How do you think you're going to pay your bills? Emily, what shouldn't you say to someone getting divorced? Have you considered how it's going to affect your kids? 
Melanie, what shouldn't you say to someone going through a divorce? Mm. Dating's rough out there, you sure? And I wouldn't ask them if they've considered counseling because obviously they have. No one makes that decision lightly. At the risk of sound. I mean, to be fair, a lot of a lot of people make this decision rather lightly. Um, there are so many issues with this video, with the with the people responding here, um, particularly that one about have you considered the kids? This is something really where you see a lot of women they like up and leave long term marriages, and straight up they actually don't consider the effects on kids uh, at all but yeah so <laughs> very interesting video here what shouldn't you say to someone getting divorced personally i don't care like why why do we have to like adjust our words so that we don't hurt people's feelings like if someone's going through a divorce nothing wrong with asking them some tough questions in my opinion because divorce is a, is a really serious thing like as much as these people want to brush it off as though it's not really serious and you know Sometimes mean questions, quote unquote mean questions, are probably quite warranted. Let's keep going on to the next one. Oh, and also, something funny about that is the woman making the comment about the dating being harder. Hell, that's a lot of the content on this channel, right? You'll see a woman literally get divorced or end a relationship. She'll be 30, 40, whatever. She'll go back out into the dating market. She'll realize it's damn hard. And uh, that's pretty damn entertaining, I'll say. So... Let's continue to the next uh, next TikTok here. At the risk of sounding like I'm bragging about my new relationship, which I totally am, let me be happy. I want to share how I am learning for the. I I, I didn't say anything. <laughs> well, guys, just let her be happy, okay? Don't say anything. Like, isn't it weird, right? We open up the video, and we we want to listen to what they have to say, and then within two seconds. We're, it feels like we're being yelled at or the woman's getting aggressive for absolutely no reason. At the risk of sounding like I'm bragging about my new relationship, which I totally am, let me be happy. I want to share how I am learning for the first time in my life what it feels like to be liked by my romantic partner. And if this sounds so unreal to you, you're not my target audience. It sounds incredibly stupid, um, and I can explain to you why it sounds stupid. Because if, if, your, if your argument is, I'm 30 or 40 plus years of age, and now is the first time that, and this is a divorced woman again, by the way, this is the first time I've ever felt loved by my partner, that tells me something about your ability to select a partner, particularly as a woman. Women have options in dating. If all of your previous dating history was dudes who didn't love you, or you perceive them to have not loved you, or they don't like you, or whatever, hey, maybe... You're choosing the wrong men. But uh, let's keep going. When you grow up being and mistreated by your parents or caregivers, it is almost guaranteed that you will gravitate towards partners who treat you the same way. And this is because your parents taught you that at your core, you are not worthy. So for me, that looked like a series of relationships with emotionally unavailable, avoidant men who reaffirmed this subconscious belief that I held that there was ultimately something wrong about me that made me unlovable. And then I met him and everything that I thought I knew about romance changed. Historically, I tended to pursue relationships with men that I was attracted to who seemed at first like they liked me because they showed interest in either going on a date with me or hooking up with me. But once I developed feelings, they would become more and more unavailable. They wouldn't return my calls or my texts. They would tell me how much they liked me and how amazing I was. And then put zero effort into making plans with me or connecting with me or growing and developing a relationship with me. Yeah, so essentially what we did when we were younger is we, uh, we chased the men who were highly attractive the men who gave us a little bit of attention. And she, this is really funny how she slices this as well. She says, the guys who showed me some attention, whether that be wanting to take me out on a date or wanting to hook up with me. That, that's all it took just from the guy, an expression of interest in hooking up with this woman. And she was sold. If you, you know, like if she was attracted to you, she was sold. You didn't need to, this is exactly what I'm talking about guys, where you'll have these older women 
who or, or hell just a lot of women in general who will say look i want a guy to take me out on a date i want a man to open doors for me i want a chivalrous dude who understands the traditional ways that you know men are quote unquote supposed to behave right cool are you a traditional woman no then why should the man be traditional for you so this is a woman who has dated you know all the bad boys all the chads all the all the fun guys and now that we're 30 or 40 we, we've we're ready for love now I, i'm sorry guys but that's not how it works you know you don't get to treat the dudes who are actually interested in you like crap or you know go out and ignore them or brush them off or whatever and now that you conveniently need them just like pick them up like some sort of toy that you toss to the side and you know guys are not stupid okay men see this men see well that girl who in her 20s she i hit her up a few times and she never wanted to go out on a date with me or hang out or you know she would always be crying about xyz guy and then all of a sudden you get to 30 or 40 or whatever your age is right and you start getting those dms from these same women saying well you know can we can we meet up for coffee or tea or whatever and the answer is no absolutely not let's continue with the video i know all of a sudden i have a man who's showing up for all of it he is staying connected since we matched on tinder there has not been a single day that has gone by where he has not reached out to connect with me some days he's busier than others some days i'm busier so the level of communication changes but what his consistency has done is create this really safe space in our relationship where we know we're there for each other He's also super consistent with making plans to see me. At minimum, I think we see each other at least three times a week. Lately Holy hell, man. <laughs> Holy hell. So three plus times a week, the guy's putting in all the effort, he's being consistent, etc., etc. But Which, you know, guys, I've got nothing. If dudes want to take... If dudes want to go out here, they want to date women and, and uh, you know, pay for all the crap and set up dates and whatever... If dudes want to make that and that, do that and that's what makes them happy, sure. I just don't want to see dudes getting the short end of the stick. And what I mean by the short end of the stick is like a 30 or 40 plus year old divorced woman who probably is going to end up treating him like crap. And the only reason she's dating him now is because he, she needs some stability after getting... Uh, how do I say this politely? I don't think I can say it politely. She has seen uh, a lot of bad boys before, before him. So th this man is now, what is he? He's like dude number, I don't know, 78. Who, who the hell knows, to be honest with you, right? Let's just call it number 78. He's, he's man number 78, lucky man number 78, and he gets to commit to the woman as if this is some sort of, you know, benefit for the man. Personally, it's not something I understand. Lately, it's been a little bit more, but I think over the next two weeks, it's going to be a little bit less. I've got family in town and one of his close friends is moving away from the island so we're both trying to manage our other lives while still making time for each other. And it didn't like change when we became intimate. Like he wasn't super into me and consistent until we slept together and then hard to get a hold of. If anything, he is more available to me now. And now this is the big one. This is how I know that he truly likes me and none of the other guys did. He cannot stand hurting my feelings. The other day he accidentally did something and I told him and he teared up. It was a genuine mistake on his part, but the thought of hurting me hurt him deeply because he actually likes me. Guys like this do exist, but they are hard to find. Uh, no, these dudes who are consistent and who will give you what you want, there are less of them now and there will be less of them over time as TikTok videos like these are released. Uh, but they are they are not hard to find and truthfully what i see in this man's future is something incredibly painful um because a lot of these women who are attracted to instability um who have been through all the bad boys and whatever they typically end up eventually going back there you know like the, the if, if you want to come along and give a woman who has never had a stable life and you want to try and fix her and you want to give her a stable life a lot of these women will end up just uh, straight up throwing you away or mistreating the guy or leaving the guy or cheating on the guy in the end because they're used to the instability. Like when you come in and you're a positive force for their life, they, they can't actually tolerate it for long periods of time, typically. But guys, we are going to be leaving today's episode there. As always, remember to leave your thoughts and your comments. Make sure you guys take care of yourselves and I'll be seeing you all in the next episode. Peace.